Hi there, this is Alexander Hall for Viva Voce, week two of our summer term, so our FMP term. Uh, so, I'm going to be going over some of the questions that I went over this week. So, so question one, what have I done this week for my project sessions? For my project sessions, should I say. Um, yeah, with that... Um, over this week, we've been given our full script, so we were given our full script, which was yesterday, which is Tuesday, the 1st of May, so we got that given to us, and uh, we had like a full read through of it, so we all could familiarise ourselves with um, with what, se what different scenes are going to be done at different times, uh, which characters are coming in at what times, and then of course, looking at some of the descriptions especially some of the descriptions for when we're going to be improvising for film, etc. All that sort. So we looked at that. And uh, we looked at our... And we've started off doing like an opening sequence to the um, to the production. So working on how the play's going to start. So what's the expression it's going to be given at the start of the, um, of the, uh, of the play. And all the different... All the different improvs that we're going to do. So we had an opening sequence of Jake being on the on the right side of the stage on the audience perspective, and then and then of course there was Lola on the left hand side of the uh, of the stage. So up down stage left uh, for Lola, and and down stage right for um for Jake. So yeah, we did that, and you know we had our all our different. Uh, all the different characters coming together on different sides, so on the left and on the right, and we all had a fight uh, from different sides and that. So we looked at that, and uh, yeah, we went for a full run through of most of the scenes that we're going to be doing, um, that we're going to be staging for the show as well. So we started blocking a few, working on which ones are going to go where, like stage exits, so we can start looking at that as early as we can. So that's all cleared out. So we've got an idea of what we need to work on for the next three weeks now. And yeah, that's what we looked at this week. Um, what research have I done? Have I undertaken independently? So recently, I looked at um, a few actors who have had um, experience on stage, who've had stage experience and screen experience all at once. So the ones I did look at was um, Angela Lansbury. Who um, who I know very well for playing Miss Price in Bedknobs and Broomsticks, which was back in the early the sixties, and then of course she played she voice acted for Mrs Potts in Beauty and the Beast in nineteen ninety four, and yeah, and she also did like um, a TV series called The Murder She Wrote, which she did f around near the end of the nineties. But she did it for quite some time, so it's quite a popular TV series, and she's also she's British and she's become very popular, uh, both. And she's also been doing a lot of stage um, for Broadway as well. So she's done a few Broadway musicals. I remember she, one of the ones she's done has been like Gypsy, and of course she did uh, Sweeney Todd, and did like the film version of it as, actually as well. So um, she's done a lot on both on both stage and uh, on screen. So I wanted to get myself into that and start researching her for those. Uh, another one would be David Tennant, who you probably know very well for him being the Tank Doctor in the science fiction uh, series called Doctor Who, where he played uh, the Doctor from two thousand and five all the way to two thousand and ten, and you know he was a Really, he was probably one of the most well-known doctors in the whole in the whole series, throughout from the sixties all the way to now. So he's one of the biggest ones, and uh, yeah, he's he's done a lot of screen. So he's done quite a lot in on the screen. So he's done a few other TV series. Uh, quite recently, I think he's done Broad Broadchurch Street, which I think he's done before. Uh, another one that I Another thing that I could um, remember that he did was Nativity 2, which was like a children's film. 
and it was one particularly for Christmas. And um, yeah, on the stage side of it, he's been working a lot with the Royal Shakespeare Company, where he got acclaimed for doing his biggest role as Hamlet, which was like his biggest role, and he got critics acclaimed for that. And also he did Much Ado About Nothing, which he worked alongside Catherine Tate, who he also worked with um, during the Doctor Who franchise, which he he met up with her during like 2006 and 2006 Christmas special, and then and then worked with her in like 2000 and uh, 2008, I think it was, and then did like a full series with her. So yeah, that's that's one of them. So that's one of the researches I've done. Um, another one that I looked at, I looked at this YouTube video, but it's not particularly on like the biography of someone. But I looked at uh, a video uh, about how to do screen acting, which uh, Michael Caine hosted. So what he did was he tried to look at like the different combinations of where everyone goes wrong with stage and screen and started to look at how you can improve your stage, your screen acting abilities. So trying to make, so one of the main techniques that I heard, learnt from him was not to be too projective in your voice uh, because you don't, they're not as reliant on your voice being very outspoken, like on stage where you have to project your voice, especially if you don't have mics around you and you don't have mics click to you. So you have to be very reliant on that. But also, um, uh, he also was telling us about how not to overact, so don't be too theatrical in when you're doing film. So try and... And also think about your pace as well when you're doing screen acting. So uh, if you were to do a scene where you're having an argument and someone was to like take an insult at you and, you, and they said, you're the fault, and then you might... If you were doing a theatre, you'd go, It was not my fault! I did not do it! So you'd really speak quite quickly, which is what a lot of theatre actors do. But in the film, but when it comes to screen, it's more like, You did it. You were the one who went for it. Or, oh, I need to try and think of, You did it. You were the one who made it happen. And then on this, the other actor. How dare you make that statement at me? I didn't make it that way at all. So you, so you get the picture. I'm, my pace wasn't the greatest, but you know, I'll get used to it when I get when I get by with it. But yeah, it's just trying to work on all the different aspects that you need to be careful of when it comes to screen acting compared to how you do it in theatre. And you know, working on your step on on how you block a scene. Uh, the difference between blocking a scene for screen and how you block a scene for stage and thinking about all the different strict rules they have in place for different areas. So, how have I applied all this in class? So, try, so one of the things we've had to do is switching the techniques uh, from film to stage. So, for example, of course, I've mentioned projection. So making sure that you're not as projective when it comes to screen. They're not as reliant on you speaking so much and trying to keep your voice healthy. So if you've got a voice that's very... If you've got a very sore throat, so if you look, remember what Michael Cade speaks like. So he speaks quite like this. And the reason he doesn't speak so loudly... The reason he doesn't speak like this so much, which is what he would do if he was on stage, the reason when you hear him speak like this when it comes to screening is because they're not as reliant on your on your tone of voice. They're reliant on how well you can show your emotion, even if it's very quiet. And make sure that you do it slowly, not. Don't do it like that, because if you do it like that, you're going to make it sound like a stage, like a stage show. So don't do it like that. You've got to do it like this. I'm not going for that choice. It's, it's one of my impressions, but you get the picture. Um, what practical problems did I come across this week? So, when I did 
on uh, on Friday, which was the 27th of April. What happened was I uh, we were only just told that we were going to go over a scene, but it was being that we were doing like a longer version of it, so there were a few extra there were a few extra lines that were added, so that I had to read that some of us had to read out for. Um, and one of the things that I had to read out, I had to read uh, Billy's interview scenes, which I was not familiar with at all at the time when I was asked to do it, and I didn't have the chance to really look over it, and I probably should have really familiarised myself with it as early as I could, but I probably just should have used more time with it. So get a bit more prepared, try and really, really get your head with it. Don't just look at it. So one of the things I was doing, I was kept constantly looking at it instead of looking up and looking towards the people because I was just, I just did not know it at the time when I should have known it. So I need to make sure that I try and learn it as quickly as I can and as really intensely as I can because that's the most important thing I need to do. Uh, and also another thing, another practical problem I came across, and this is something that happened to me yesterday, which was the 1st of May. What happened was I I was asked to do like a profile audition, so like the auditions you get when it comes to screen acting. Just uh, what I need to make sure of is when I'm being asked questions, I need to have honesty in myself. So one of the things I said to um, to Gary in our in our um, in our, in the inter- in the uh, audition, I said this. I said he said, "What's your what's your height?" So what's your height? And I went. Five foot four, and obviously I've now found out that is not my height at all. I'm not five foot. I'm not five foot four. I mean, I could stand up and show you. I'm not five foot four, but that just came out of the blue because I had nothing to say because I was so petrified at that time. So what I need to do is make sure if I don't know what to say or how to respond, just say I don't know. Because it's better to be honest than not be honest. If you're not honest, things will go wrong. So it's a bit like, it's this is more of an extreme one, but if someone's to ask you, can you swim? If you can't swim, say no. Don't say yes. Don't lie. Because if you lie, you might affect your whole life. You might lose your, um, you might lose your repertoire. You might even lose your life. If you say, I can't swim, and then they say, right, swim, and then you start swimming, and you can't swim, and then you drown, that's your own fault, because you don't want that. So always have honesty. The people who are the honest, don't die in vain. That's the most important thing to remember, so always have honesty, especially when it comes to auditions like that. Um, yeah, and also one of the things that I need to make sure of is, this is what happened to me today on the Wednesday, the 2nd of May. I need to get more familiar with my cues, remember my cues as well, and, you know, just get get, get into the, the whole script as well. So make sure that I know what I'm doing. Don't don't start hesitating, just go for it. Um, so, have we created anything new? Yes, we have. We've created an opening sequence for, um, for this FMP. So the opening sequence, which I've mentioned before. We did a combination of we did like a combination with the with the boys talking together and working on the combina- with the uh, combination scenes with with the girls as well. So we looked at all those, looked at all the different scenes where, for example, Jake was going to be with Billy. So we ha- looked at um, a scene where me as Billy and Chris as Jake were just playing a bit of passing football and you know some of the girls are walking past some of the boys were walking past and they just had a, like a brief hello didn't say much and we were going oh what's up with you so it's, that's one of the scenes we looked at and yeah uh what was the audition process like for me and how did it all go so the whole audition process we've already give, been given our own so i'll just so i'll just tell you how i feel it went it's very different, very different to many other audition processes I've been through. So most audition processes are like, oh, you just go in for like a few out. You just go in for like one hour, just show what you know, talk, talk, talk to the, um, 
talk to the director, telling him about yourself, telling him other experiences you've had, talk about how enthusiastic you are about doing a particular show or a particular course or whatever. Um, but yeah, this was very different because the process was a lot longer. It took days. It didn't take didn't take a day. It didn't take hours. It took days, and even weeks. So and sometimes, yeah, uh, it's quite hard to really. And actually, casting is the hardest thing to do, especially, especially when you're trying to really think consciously. And when people are, you get really great actors. You just don't know who just who's really stood out because sometimes, some people are just as talented as others. No one is like higher ranked or whatever. Sometimes that's just down to audience opinions. Uh, but yeah, but especially when I was doing. One of the things I do know I really struggled with was when I was doing the duologue, which was like the beginning of the audition process, where I had to do a duologue with um, Abby of when Jake and um, and Lola had their one-to-one -one conversation. And, you know, Jake was going, oh, my life's all finished, all because of this, all because of what we've done. And, you know, he's getting all um, annoyed and upset and then Lola's doing exactly the same we did that scene uh one of the things I really struggled with was just making sure I knew the words because um when you work on a scene and you only get like three hours to really either familiar familiarize yourself or even learn it it's so it's such small small time and you have to be so intensive with yourself if you really want to know it which is why which is the difference with the industry sometimes Sometimes you can learn it that quickly, or sometimes you can't. And sometimes the people who learn it get the role. So that was one of the things I, I found really difficult. But one of the things I found easy was doing like a dialogue. So when you were do when I was doing scenes which involved like all the boys together. So when I had to play people like Sam and Greg, you know they were a lot easier because I had a lot less to say, and you know everyone had like a fair share of amount of things to say. Although not ev more people have more to say than others, have more lines and all that. But it was a lot easier because it wasn't like that person talks, that person talks, that person talks, and it just goes back and forth, back and forth. So it's a bit like, it's a bit like a skipping rope. When it comes to a duologue where a skipping rope is done, it's harder to do because you have to just remember each line where it comes, and sometimes I'm not easy to do that in that amount of time. So yeah. Uh, the character I will be playing, which I know I'm now casted for, is Bill, Billy, who is the guy who hosted the hosted the event. So it was the party was at his house. So I'm the one who like hired my own house for a party, and it's where the apparent the apparent rape happened, even though it's not told just exactly until like near the end when everything gets a bit uh, pushy and iffy. So, and yeah, he's, he's not the most, you, you see more, he's, he's a character who's not shown in the majority, he's like a minority, if you know what I mean, so he's, the only real parts where he's got a lot is, for example, when he's doing his own party, which is going to be filmed, so I'm going to be, that, that's going to be improvised, so they'll be very reliant on how well I can improvise some lines without, complicating myself and not having to learn like for a script so I just have to kind of improvise from that which is going to be quite it's going to be quite easy compared to what most others will have to do and uh, yeah I'll have very small lines to learn so it's very it's very uh, easy to get by from most others that I've done before I've, I remember doing quite a few other main roles where yeah you had so much to learn sometimes Sometimes in very small amount of time, it takes a lot of pressure and it takes a lot of commitment. But this one, I feel, is going to really kind of give me a more of an idea of how much, how much I, how much I'm really reliant on having a good screen ability, so a good screen acting ability compared to how reliant they are on my stage acting ability. So I think actually it will be a bit of a challenge to really think about how well I can do my screening abilities to how I can do my stage abilities when I'm a lot more familiar with doing stage stage abilities and more stage skills than screen skills. So 
it will be a challenge, but nonetheless, there will be a few hips along the way, but I'm looking forward to doing it nonetheless. And yeah, um, how's the transition uh, been from stage to film? So, so transitioning the tone of how I speak on film compared to stage. So, what I can tell you about this is thinking about the tone. So, one of the things I, I've already mentioned was, you know, when you, when you hear Mark Cage speaking in a film, he speaks very slowly. He doesn't go too fast. He talks very slowly. If you look at what you've done, you'll know exactly what you should do next. And that is how you speak like him. And that is how he speaks when it comes to screen. He's so familiar with the screening abilities than he is with stage abilities, which is why you don't, which is why a lot of people say he's the one who does less is more. And less is more is what you need to remember, especially when it comes to screen acting. And yeah, so that's one of the transitions that I've had to get used to, thinking about my pace, thinking about the tempo of how I speak, just getting used to that, and being very short, very snappy, which is vital when it comes to film. And that's it from me. Uh, this is Alexander Hall from Viva Voce Week 2. Thank you very much for watching, and have a good day.